Hello and welcome. In this video, I would like to quickly demonstrate how to pull data from a website and put it into an Excel file. From there, it is easy to save it in a variety of formats, including common delimited. The easiest way to get data from a website is to just simply download it. Sometimes pulling data off of a website is really easy because there's a link to the data set that you can just click on and often you have your choice between several data formats. In this case, you can download data in a comma delimited or CSV format. You can also download the data in Excel format and you can download the data in XML format. XML, which is short for Extensible Markup Language, is beyond the scope of this course, but I would like to show you what the data looks like when we open it as a text file. For those of you familiar with HTML, which is, its, which is itself a type of markup language, specifically hypertext markup language, you will probably recognize this format, at least to some degree. Like I said, XML is beyond the scope of this class, but it's worth knowing that if you're willing to develop some programming skills, we can download data in XML format. If the data source you are interested in does not provide a user-friendly download, the next easiest option is to just copy and paste the data from the website into an Excel file. Very often, you will see data as a table that can be conceptualized as columns and rows and you can just copy and paste the data into an Excel spreadsheet. Very often Excel can recognize that we are trying to feed it a set of columns and rows, and it makes it very easy to just copy and paste data. Unfortunately, sometimes the data that you want is not going to copy cleanly into Excel. In these cases, you're going to have to get creative. One trick is that you may need to copy and paste the data into a notepad document, and then use the formal import in Excel that lets you choose which characters act as delimiters in the CSV file. As another option, with some training and experience, it's very possible to write a computer program that will screen scrape data from a website. Java, Python, and R all facilitate screen scraping. Here we see some data that is not presented as a table. It does not lend itself to cutting and pasting into Excel. Here is the HTML for the page. If I search for a given state, I can find the state and its data. In effect, your program would then read the HTML code presented by the website and scrape the data from the screen. Lots of people make gobs of money writing code that does screen scraping. Unfortunately, screen scraping is beyond the scope of this class, but if you have an interest in this topic, I encourage you to learn more about it and get good at it. It's a great skill to have in your toolbox. Even if you can't yet write a program to do screen scraping, we do have some less sophisticated options for pulling data. At this website, the data is presented in a messy fashion. Note that if I copy and paste the data from the website into Excel, and here I'm just gonna grab this data, and I'm gonna hit Control C, I'm gonna to go to my Excel file, and open up a new one here. 
and I'm going to click in here. I'm going to put control V. And what I get is kind of a mess. The Excel document doesn't show me the data as neat rows and columns. However, the data is not randomly displayed. There is consistent spacing between the cells. In this case, it's relatively easy to write a macro that will do a lot of steps at once. And then I can execute the macro for each country. On a PC, a macro is just a capture of mouse clicks and keystrokes. To create a macro, you must first turn on the Developer tab. To do this, you want to go to File, then Options, then I want to go to Customize Ribbon, and you want to turn on, I just turned off Developer, you want to check it so that it's included, and then click OK. At the top of the page, you should see a Developer tab here. I click on developer and here is my menu for handling macros. Now, please note that you want to have use relative references turned on and darkened like that. We're going to use relative references for our macro. So look and see if you've got any macros. You can turn on the macro manager and you can see I don't have any in here active right now. That's on purpose, I've deleted them all. Okay, for this instance, I want to build two columns, one with the country name and one to hold the value for each country. I'm going to select one to highlight the whole row. I'm going to right click and insert and over here in G. I'm going to create a column name, country name. Doctors per person, uh, per capita. Okay. Here I have created two column names. I can do these in any column, but I'm going to put the new data in columns G and H just to give myself some visual space between the mess on the left and my cleaned up data on the right. Now for each entry, I want to do the same steps. So I want to start in the cell where I want to insert my country name, which in this case is G2. To record my macro, I click on record macro. I give my macro a name. I'm just going to call it country clean. I need to assign a shortcut key. I like J because that uh, and K are not already claimed by the Windows operating system typically. And I'm going to hit OK. And when I hit OK, now anything I do will be recorded for the macro until I tell the macro recorder to quit recording. So I'm going to say go ahead and start recording. So next, I want to move my cursor to the left six spaces. If I click on the Afghanistan, it will take me to a website. It's a hot link. If I click on it, it will take me to a website. So I'm just moving manually. I'm going to go ahead and hit control. And then while I'm holding control, I hit C to select that. I hit the right arrow key six times and come back to country name. I have a country name now. The next thing I want to do is grab that physician count. So I'm going to come down to over six. I'm going to hold down control and hit C. I'm going to come over seven. One, two, three, four. Six, seven. I'm going to go up to one, two, hit control V. And now I have that value uh, right next to Afghanistan where I want it. The next thing I want to do is get rid of these three rows that I don't need anymore. To get rid of these rows, I'm going to select these three rows. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit delete and the rows will be brought up. Can now click on the next place that I want to start my next execution of the macro. I'm done. I hit stop recording. I've recorded a macro. And now when I hit control J, 
the executions I did will be done relatively to the space that I start at. Ready? So I'm going to hit Control J and watch what happens to my data. It copy and pasted Albania. It copy and pasted the number of physicians. It got rid of this these rows that I don't need. And it brought me so that I'm ready to do the same thing for the next country. And all I have to do is keep hitting Control J and my macro does the work for me. And in short order, I have a nice set of data consisting of a column, a country name, and the corresponding doctors per capita. Now, I do have some physicians. I don't want this verbiage in here. All I want is the actual number here. <clears throat> so I'm going to say doctors per capita clean. To do a final cleanup, I can use a combination of the left and find functions in Excel. Quick reminder, the left function will return all of the text that is to the left of a character, and the find will tell you where within a string you can find a given character. In this data, I see that there is a clear pattern. A number is followed by a character, which is followed by some verbiage. I want to isolate the number. So using the left and find functions, I tell Excel to find the space character and only give me whatever characters occur to the left of it. Now I can copy and paste this formula and I end up with a set of data that shows me a country name and the doctors per capita in each country. Quick note, if you tried to delete the original doctors per capita data, you will mess up the cleaned up column because the cleaned up column is dependent on the original data. So I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. C. Come over a few columns, give yourself a little space. I'm going to right click. I'm going to, to I right click to select the column. I right click to select the column, and then I left click to show my paste options. I'm going to come down, I'm going to paste the values. So when I look at the cell, I don't see the reference to uh, any other cells. I have copied the value itself. Now the problem is, it has been copied because the first thing it encountered, my selection has characters in it, a uh, string instead of a number. These numbers have been entered as strings, meaning that we don't see it, but there's an invisible single apostrophe before the number. The fix for this is to select the first number in the column that we want to change. When we mouse over, we'll have an option to uh, do things, but now I can select all these numbers. Now, there's a little arrow there. I can click on that, and it will say convert to number, and it will do so. And I have an independent set of number formatted data. I can get rid of all my other X superfluous data, and I end up with a beautiful set of data of country name and doctors per capita cleaned up that used to look like this mess over here, but I've turned it into a very nice usable data set. Towards learning these types of data cleanup tactics, I suggest you learn about the write, mid, and search methods if you are not already familiar with them. Obviously, cleaning up data manually is not a practical method if you have more than a few hundred entries, but for a lot of data sets, macros and a few cleanup formulas can be a ready solution. In the end, this video is just a teaser. There are many, many methods for cleaning up data. Hopefully this data showed you the usefulness of extracting and cleaning up data and has perhaps sparked your curiosity, imagination, and desire to learn more about data analytics. I hope this data was helpful. 
please contact me if you have any questions.